Look at this. Huge safe zone. Whoa. Just expanded the safe zone so it pulses out with its protective something. Crystal cylinders. Within the open structure of these nests, swarms of glinting particles form shifting shapes. Nesting creatures. These swarms of bright creatures provide vital safe zones in the bloom. Let's start logging data on them. Within these complex transparent structures, the blurred activity of many individual creatures can be seen. These must be nests. These colonies do well to hold out against the bloom. The individual creatures seem to be able to digest the microbial growth. We can use this. We should try deploying a colony to see if we can create our own safe zone inside this toxic flood. Nest workers. Tiny transparent creatures sampled from a woven nest. We're low on oxygen and I need room. And it seems like I don't need the shrill sacks, so let's use them. No, we shouldn't use them just yet. Silicate skeletons. The ornate domes and porous spheres of these skeletons glint with the purity of their silica growths. These strange forms scattered around inside the bubble are these skeletons. They resemble radiolarians, but far bigger in scale. They're incredibly ornate. A colony of shattered domes lying in the silvery silt. What were these creatures? Sphere Fragment. An ornate mineral orb honeycombed with oxygen bubbles. Oh, it'd give us tons of oxygen if we need it. Burnt Out Drone. Oh, a small construction drone from the base, corroded beyond use. What was Manet building out here? Beyond the bubble, the green clouds gather again. With the water sapped of all oxygen, what can be fueling this endless growth? Oh, were there samples? No. Ah, nice. I wonder how long that lasts for. In this northern part of the bloom, there's little shelter from the storm of green. Are we going to be safe here? No. We're still not safe? Oh, we're like in the middle zone, like right in between them. Dang. Go, 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 go. I can see nothing. Whoa. Um. Oh no. I wanted more life forms. 
I didn't think it disappeared so fast. Should I go that way? God, I am curious. Oh, I was thinking, why don't I use this thing and give me a ton of oxygen? But no, we need to study that. I shouldn't use it. I'm going to use some of these. Let's deploy that there and then head back here. That one's going to last for a little while. I think I can get another one. Oh, can I? Oh, I can't until I use them all up. Okay, fair enough. There's little to observe this far into the bloom. Keep going! Oh, we're near a way station! I didn't even realize that, I just looked off the screen. I'd love to read those descriptions, but, you know. I like being able to breathe. Well, I'm an AI, but Ellery likes being able to breathe. <laughs> Like the nests themselves, which are woven from transparent threads, the bubbles which protect them also seem to have a delicate skin. It must have been a struggle to assemble the metallic age of this way station so deep in the bloom. What led Manet out here? Finally, a way station. With this active, we can call for retrieval all across the bloom. Useful when we run low on oxygen. Open the terminal and we can resupply. And see if Manet left any map data behind. Okay, I've got our logs here. A lot of trips back and forth between here and a laboratory? That means she must have set up a remote lab somewhere deeper into the bloom. She spent months making trips to it, ferrying some materials from elsewhere in the bloom to there. She was studying something, something important to her. We have to find that lab. I'll log the coordinates on the dive map when we get back to the base. Are you back with me? Yeah. Good. I wanted to ask you about the bloom. I've been trying to understand what's causing it. It seems unlikely that we're looking at a stable ecosystem. It has to be a unique event. And yet, creatures have rapidly and effectively adapted to these conditions. How is that possible? There's something we aren't seeing. Something Manet was investigating, too. Do you think she knows something we don't? Absolutely. She has to. Maybe she's holed up in the lab mentioned in the map data, waiting for us. Let's find that lab. 
Got a whole bunch of new samples. I'm gonna put these back in here. I don't think I need to take them with me, really. I'll keep one of each of these on me. Let's suppose we have a new data entry. We don't. Lab analysis error. No relevant taxonomy entries found. Oh, I guess we need to find some more creatures that this is relevant to before we can update the entries. We need to make the entries first. That makes sense. Wow, oh, same with this. Right, they don't get taxonomy entries until we've investigated a certain amount of them? Yeah, okay. Running at 34% effectiveness. What does our dive map look like now? Data from the way station places Manet's remote lab in this southern part of the bloom. She's hiding something here. Indeed. However, now that we have the ability to go super fast, I think we can probably get all of these samples here. I think that was the main thing keeping us from being able to do that. Let's head over to the East Reef station. There should be a sample around the back, like pretty much like directly that direction. And I don't think there was a way to reach there from from that way where we found this suit. But I do remember there's a pathway that we never took back here. Yeah, this one. I don't think we ever took this. Ah. Uh, I need a shrill sack. Uh. Oh, this is bright pollen. I don't think that's going to help. I don't know if shrill sacks are actually here, are they? Uh. I think not. Yeah, it's not. Okay, I'm gonna have to go back and put some in my inventory for my storage. Here we go. Broken boulder. Stress marks can still be seen along the edge of this huge rock, but it remains silent about its own history. Glittering stalk. This stalk looks silently out over the deep rift. I wonder if Manet looked over the same view with different eyes. Shrill sacks. Slashed stalk. This bubble coated stalk has large gashes in its side and it seems to be shriveling away. Its exposed tissue would be easy to sample. Stock segment. That's what we needed. Strong current. 
Across this wide rift, the tall rock walls of the reef's second finger can be seen. What lies inside them, I wonder? Probably more samples. Which is why we should go to them, shouldn't we? Yeah. Let's go. I want to read those descriptions, but I know this doesn't last long. Like, just from that, where is it at? Yeah, it's like 25% left already. Wide passage. This gap between the rocks allows passage both into and out of this exposed second finger of the reef. Calm Canyon. Little streams of sand, of sand pipe through gaps in the rocks here, driven deep into cracks by the current to the north. Sheltered Passage. A large boulder protects the mouth of this passage from the onrushing waters. Ragged stalks. Battered by the water, these stalks cling to the rocks. A single creature braves the current to graze on their twisted forms. Vector blocked. Guess I gotta go this way first. Strong current. The water is funneled by the rocks into this clearing, making it hard going against the rush. Oh, I just need to... Power up. Canopy top, I think. Good sample here. So we don't get, like, blown in the current if we are still in the current. We just can't move. Okay, that's not too bad. Quiet clearing. This section of the shelf, sheltered by the tall headland to the north, is strangely peaceful. Okay, so we're safe now. Rock Gap. A shattered section of the wall allows passage onto the outcrop. Ah, so we can go across to the other finger, I guess that's probably another finger. Let's not go there just yet. Worn boulders. These huge stones have been worn smooth by thousands of years of sitting beside the rift. Sandy Passage. White sand is gathered against the boulder on either side of this passage in soft, pale drifts. Split Stalk. This tall stalk is torn open, perhaps by a predator? Inside, a rich tapestry of fungal life forms exposed to the open water are slowly dying. That is another sample. So many things to study. Ah, oh, it's gonna be great. Okay, that's it. Um, yeah, that's it for this finger. So let's head over to the other finger.
Wait, why is this one already scanned? Have, have we been here? Rift mouth. Exposed ledge. This western shelf is buffeted by currents, bringing with them a scattering of something. Sorry, I got scared and wanted to keep going. Strong current. These stalks block the gully, but also the strong currents behind. Even if we clear them, those currents will still block our passage. First finger. The broken shelf of the reef reaches out towards the deep like a hand. This is the first of three fingers which mark the edge. Okay, so I think we're safe now. Narrow gully. These walls here have been smoothed into soft ripples. The sign of a strong current descending from the north. Actually, we're not quite safe yet, but we will be here. Wait, this one we've already been to. Yeah, we've been here. Where is this? We've really been to this way station? I gotta look at which way station this is. all the way to the central reef. Yeah, that was the first finger up here. This is the second finger. And this is the east reef. Huh. It's all these little kind of islands. Can you really call them islands if they're underwater? <laughs> I don't know. There's a sample out here in one of them. And a sample back here. We've gotten most of the samples, though. Well, let's look at what we've got. Actually, I'm going to keep that shrill sack on me. of updates. Sing stock. Ah, we got a sketch. Yes. But first, theories. Attempts to analyze the interior of a sing stock reveals many different organisms within the stock which are not genetically related to it in any way. It seems that the sing stocks are actually tubular gardens which host juvenile fungal creatures. The swaying of the stocks keeps these sealed environments fed with filtered water and microbial life while allowing their spores to be distributed across the reef. However, I haven't found a single example of any of these life forms growing outside of a sing stalk, suggesting that they can only survive within these carefully controlled tube gardens, and that the spores they release are being used by the stalks for other purposes. Are these vertical farms designed to cultivate other species that might feed the rest of the stalks with showers of nutrient-rich spores?
Signal stock, theory in a sketch. Chemical analysis of a signal stock tissue sample has confirmed the presence of a yeast-like fungus and large amounts of ethanol saturated in the tissue itself. This prompts a rethink of why many creatures target the hard-to-get signal stalks as a foodstuff. While I initially theorized it was due to their role as protectors of stalk colonies, the significant presence of ethanol in signal stalk tissue means most creatures would feel the effects of the alcohol consumed and make it buzzed from grazing on signal stalks. This, in moderation, would be a favorable, even enjoyable effect for the creatures, leading them to repeatedly target signal stalks. If I remain stranded on Gliese 667cc for long enough, I may need to make use of this particular biological property myself. <laughs> Table stock, theory in a sketch. Laboratory studies of the growths found in the upper canopy reveals that they contain the genetic material of tens of different species. These growths hold, within the round casing, seeds for many species local to the table stalks, as well as spores for the reproduction of the stock colonies themselves. Fed by a carefully maintained flow of the correct minerals and chemicals, these seeds and spores are preserved by the stalks kept viable for long periods. Could these seed banks be a complex example of... of... coalescative serotony? I don't know what that is. On Earth, some plants hold viable seeds until an environmental trigger, such as a wildfire or disease, causes their release. Perhaps the stalks are preserving the local ecology in case of environmental disaster. Are they the guardians of this reef? That is so cool. Okay. Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode, so I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we have two more samples to get.